Good morning. Today is June 7th, 2024. And we're reading Elijah. Elisha, not Elijah. Different person now. Elisha the prophet. Um, and we have a commentary. Sometime earlier, God had directed Elijah to enlist the services of Elisha to help him in the ministry of prophecy. Since then, Elisha has been Elijah's protege, following him about and learning the work of a prophet. Like his teacher, Elisha will also work wonderful miracles. In fact, while only five of Elijah's miracles are recorded, at least 12 of Elisha's will be forthcoming. Like Elijah, Elisha will perform several miracles similar in nature to those performed by the Messiah to come. But Elisha's ministry must await the end of Elijah's, and what an end it is to be. Elijah apparently knows that God is about to take him. He is now seen traveling from Gilgal to the Jordan River, where he is taken up in a whirlwind. The clear implication is that Elijah never dies in a physical sense, but is in some special way translated into another realm. Perhaps it is the same way in which Enoch was no more. However it happens, Elisha is so excited about it that he can hardly contain himself. We're in 2 Kings chapter 2. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. He picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak that had fallen from him and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of, Israel, of Elijah? He asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. The company of the prophets from Jericho, who were watching, said, The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Look, they said, we were your servants. We, your servants, have fifty able men. Let them go and look for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has picked him up and set him down on some mountain or in some valley. No, Elijah replied, do not send them. But they persisted until he was too ashamed to refuse. So he said, send them. And they sent fifty men who searched for three days, but did not find him. When they returned to Elisha, who was staying in Jericho, he said to them, didn't I tell you not to go? 
The men of the city said to Elisha, Look, our Lord, th look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, This is what the Lord says, I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the water has remained wholesome to this day, according to the word Elisha had spoken. From there Elisha went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some youths came out of the town and jeered at him. Go on up, you bald head, they said. Go on up, you bald head. He turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the youths. Then he went on to Mount Carmel and from there returned to Samaria. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he re revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, <clears throat> He replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. One day Elisha went to Shunem, and well, a well-to-do woman was there who, who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, she, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put it, put in it a bed and a table, a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to a servant, Gehazi, call the Shunammite. So he called her and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, Tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked. Gehazi said, well, she has no son of her, her husband. She has no son and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, call her. So he called her and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Don't mislead your servant, a man of God. But the woman became pregnant. In the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in that region. While the company of the prophets was meeting with him, he said to a servant, Put on the large pot and cook some stew for these men. One of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine. He gathered some of its gourds and filled the fold of his cloak. When he returned, he cut them up into the pot of stew, though no one knew what they were. The stew was poured out for the men, but as they began to eat, they cried out, O man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. Elisha said, Get some flour. He put it in the pot and said, Serve it to the people to eat, and there was nothing harmful in the pot. A man came from Baal, Shalisha, bringing the man of God twenty loaves of barley, bread, barley bread baked from the first ripe grain, along with some heads of new grain. Give it to the people to eat, Elisha said. How can I set this before a hundred men? His servant asked. 
But Elisha answered, Give it to the people to eat. For this is what the Lord says, They will eat and have some left over. Then he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. The child grew, and this is the Shunammite's son. The child grew, and one day he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. My head, my head, he said to his father. His father told a servant, carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of your one of the servants and a donkey, so I can go to the man of God quickly and return. Why go to him today? he asked. It's not the new moon or the Sabbath. It's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lead on, don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant, Gehazi, Look, there's the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything is all right, she said. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Gehazi came over to push her away, but the man of God said, Leave her alone. She is in bitter distress, but the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. Did I ask you for a son, my lord? She said. Didn't I tell you? Don't raise my hopes. Elisha said to Gehazi, Tuck your cloak into your belt. Take my staff in your hand and run. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer. Lay my staff on the boy's face. But the child's mother said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So he got up and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the boy's face, but there was no sound or response. So Gehazi went back to meet Elisha and told him the boy was not awakened. <clears throat> when Elisha reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay upon the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. And as he stretched himself out upon him, the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room, and then got on the bed and stretched out upon him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite, and he did. When he came and said, when she came, he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Now Elisha had said to the woman whose son had, had restored to life, Go away with your family and stay for a while wherever you can, because the Lord has decreed a famine in the land that will last seven years. The woman proceeded to do as the man of God said. She and her family went away and stayed in the land of the Philistines seven years. The company of the prophet said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole, and let us build a place there for us to live. And he said, Go. Then one of them said, Won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. That's it for today. Great stories. Love you all. See you tomorrow.